It's Friday. We made it. August 12, 2022. Your Day Weather Podcast being brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Cowboy State Daily has more original Wyoming news content than any other news organization in the state. Check out their website, CowboyStateDaily.com, and sign up for their daily newsletter. Well, subtropical moisture, or what we call the monsoon flow, is going to continue to dominate through the weekend. We are going to be looking at a plume of moisture sneaking underneath this high pressure ridge. Now, it's kind of counterintuitive. We're under this really big high. So why are we having the risk of bad weather like we saw in some areas yesterday? Well, when you have very, very moist air from the surface all the way up high into the atmosphere and you heat it up and you push it up against the mountain slopes, the more moisture there is in the air, inherently the more unstable the air gets and that's why it's easy to get these thunderstorms to develop in this type of pattern, even though we're under a big high pressure ridge. So there's gonna be a flooding risk because we're gonna have slow moving thunderstorms. We saw this yesterday and last night in some areas, producing some flash flood warnings in some locations. Not only do you get slow moving thunderstorms because the jet stream winds are weak this time of year, but you have thunderstorms that line up one behind another, and that's called training where one thunderstorm will develop over one area, followed by another one that crosses the same area. So we have a flooding risk. Again, we have mentioned this many times this summer. Keep your distance from the burn scars in Colorado and Wyoming especially, but back into Utah and Idaho and parts of Montana as well. But certainly Wyoming and Colorado, the burn scar areas, the flooding risk from flash flooding is there. We'll have warm temperatures. They're going to drop a little bit. Cooler temperatures will sneak in early next week. So as you plan your outdoor activities today through the weekend and probably into Monday and into Tuesday, it's a good solid four days here of being under deep subtropical moisture. You can just feel it in the air. So watch out for these thunderstorms. Here's a great shot of a lightning strike. There was a good thunderstorm, good in the sense it produced a lot of rain in the Thermopolis, Wyoming area, Hot Springs County area yesterday. Some heavy rain moved into that area with a thunderstorm. In fact, well over an inch, uh, up to two inches of rain, according to some radar estimates in some areas. We had another large thunderstorm go through the Casper area that brought some badly needed rain. The satellite photo just shows this tap. I, I extended the, the satellite photo a little bit further south to just show you where the air is coming from. Where the air comes from is critical in terms of understanding the weather environment you're in and what the weather forecast is going to be. Understanding where the air mass is coming from is going to dictate your weather. And the air mass that we're breathing and living in right now is coming up out of Mexico, up even parts of Central America. And look how far north it's able to go, all the way into southern Canada. Then it's curving around and going into the Corn Belt again, the Ring of Fire, and their high pressure ridge is where that dry, stable air is. So if you're in parts of Nebraska, Kansas, eastern Colorado, this region here, the orange area, you're just seeing the thunderstorms just go all around you. But if you're underneath this deeper plume of moisture is when you're gonna see the action. Now it's a little bit hard to see what's going on here, but I wanna show you a couple of things. Here's Casper right there, then here's Thermopolis. What this is is from the Riverton, Wyoming, next red radar estimating the radar is estimating where the heavier rain fell and you can see this large area of heavier rain in central areas of wyoming with those thunderstorms last night and there's that heavy rain along that thunderstorm that came up into the thermopolis area where that lightning photo came from and uh, this is the type of pattern that you'll see in the monsoon like this you have notice gaps there's gaps where there won't be as much rain, but underneath those thunderstorms, boy, there can be a lot of it in a hurry. The high has migrated just enough to the east to open that door up to the subtropical moisture flow, and it's basically gonna be a stagnant pattern. That high just kind of sitting there through Monday, and here is the precipitable water. I'm gonna step through the next four days here, and I want you to notice how the blues and the greens just kind of sit over the same area for four days in a row. So for this is for this afternoon and evening. And one thing I want to bring up, I've been getting a lot of questions on this, and it's a good question. I'm telling you for right now that this is for this, this afternoon and evening. It's Friday, but the map says it's Saturday, August 13th. Why is the map say August 13th and I'm telling you it's late afternoon and evening today? It's because the weather maps I'm showing you are set on what's called Greenwich Mean Time, 
which is the time in England, basically. So everybody across the world can be on the same time with weather charts. They use Greenwich Mean Time to set the weather chart. So you have to subtract six hours. So what this means is this is for 6 p.m. today. And so I'll show you tomorrow, this is 6 p.m. Saturday. So subtract six hours. I'm showing you the right weather map, even though it's labeled a day ahead. So going back to where we are, this is today, this is Saturday, this is Sunday, this is Monday. See how it just sits over Wyoming, parts of western and northern Colorado, back into the Great Basin states before drier air maybe starts to work in towards the middle of next week. So multiple days in a row of heavy rain producing thunderstorms. This shows you the arch right here of that moisture where the thunderstorms are going to be most active, but really anywhere in this region right here you could have some heavy thunderstorm activity. Now, eventually, this moisture will sag further south into these areas early to mid next week, bringing those areas some rain as well. By Wednesday of next week, okay, things change. The high retrogrades back to the west again. It's gonna heat up in the Pacific Northwest while it cools down east of the divide into the Corn Belt and Great Lakes. This will bring some upslope and cool things off a little bit early next week here. Now, there will be a burst of heat again and dryness back up here in the Pacific Northwest and in the Northern Rockies towards the middle to the end of next week. But look what happens after that. I'll show you that here in a minute. You're gonna be looking at the weather changing again. This is the 10 day forecast for precipitation. A couple of things to highlight. Look at all the rain along the Gulf Coast of Texas to Florida. We just have a lot of subtropical moisture and that cool front coming in, gonna make it very wet down there. And one thing for those of you watching for, waiting for hurricane activity, well, when you have this much rain in the Gulf of Mexico, just from thunderstorms, basically you're going to suppress any hurricane or tropical storm development for a little longer because that cools off the air and makes things a little bit harder to get tropical storm and hurricane activity going. So that could delay things there in the Gulf. But notice we're getting rain into Texas and parts of Oklahoma again, even into the uh, Rio Grande area is gonna get into these showers and thunderstorms. And there you can see the arc of heavier moisture creeping back now into parts of the Western Corn Belt later on. Now this is what happens afterwards. So even though we're gonna have this high retrograde, look what happens by next Sunday. This is a pretty strong cold front coming in by next weekend, late next weekend, suppressing the high to the south. And as we have mentioned in podcasts earlier this week and last week, the weather pattern is getting more wavy, more sine waves, more troughs, more ridges, and they're getting larger in those northern latitudes. So we're going to see probably a fairly good cold front coming in the late last week. So is this burst of heat we're going through now and into parts of next week it for summer? Well, I think so, at least in terms of prolonged periods of hot weather. Temperatures by next Sunday, this is by next Sunday, you can see there's some cold associated with that front and that trough coming on into the west, parts of Canada as well. Have yourself a great weekend. Watch out for these heavy rain producing thunderstorms. See you on Monday.